all your desperate ones
standing in our future, Lord, and you're telling us to come, and we're going to come running. We're not going to delay any longer. We're going to come. Lord, we trust you and we love you. We thank you that you're only out for our good. You are working all things together for good because we love you and are called according to your purpose. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Wow, that was good. How, how many of you, we, we have one more session tomorrow at 10 a.m. And uh, listen, I'm a pastor. Your pastor will be okay if you're not there tomorrow. Just He can relax one Sunday. I know you may be an usher or a deacon. He'll be all right. So we have a service here tomorrow at 10 a.m. And um, Or invite your pastor. <laughs> See what happens. But... Um, but we're going to be here. We're going to have a good time. It's our last meeting here for the Spirit School. Tomorrow, 10 a.m., however, the worship will start early, so come early and uh, be a part of the uh, last meeting here. But I'm telling you, have these sessions been amazing or what? You know? Every time I think of uh, the, I believe it was the first or second session today, Kev was talking about being lit up on the inside. Every time I think about it, I feel the power of God on, my, on, on me. So I don't know what's going on in me. I don't know what's going on in you, but it's good. And uh, so he's breaking stuff off and knocking stuff. He's, he's trying, guys. He's trying to help us, and God's here. And so let's just let's stay focused. And uh, it's going to be a powerful meeting tonight. So thank you for being a part. Let me, um, I do this mainly, I know it sounds a little redundant, uh, but uh, I do it mainly for the people that are watching, but I just want to give you a couple of places where we're, we're going to be here soon. Uh, this time next weekend, we're going to be in Honolulu uh, doing our spirit school there, uh, as well as a one-nighter. We're jam-packed for the one-nighter in Maui, but it's more of an outreach. Kevin is going to be teaching, but it's going to be powerful. We have we have powerful fellowships all over the islands, to be honest with you. And uh, uh, we have a real wonderful lady that uh, has a fellowship in Maui that is uh, connected with the mayor and doing wonderful things with outreach. And so, yeah, it's very special what's going on over there. So uh, that's why we keep going back. And let me mention a few more here. We have uh, One Nighter in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We were just in Michigan, and it was sitting room only. Everybody was sitting around everywhere, but we have a big, bigger venue in Kalamazoo this time, and so we need uh, want to see you come out to that. Then Tulsa, Oklahoma in May, Branson, Missouri in May, Pennsylvania, a large uh, 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 one there in Pennsylvania in June, Dallas, Fort Worth in June, our first time there, Kevin's first time in Dallas, Fort Worth with a spirit school in that, in that upper area there, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Waupon, Wisconsin, Dalton, Georgia, and we are still working on an outreach in Puerto Rico in November. And then in, in October, we have uh, the big uh, European trip. We're going to be going to uh, Switzerland, South Africa, Cape Town, and then back up to Germany. So if you want to fly over for any of those, or you know, we'd love to see you. But, uh, I mean, this, this what right here was worth it This whole for a whole year, this spirit school. I mean, I'm changed, Kevin. I don't know what was going on. I'm a new man after this one, so I hope everybody else is doing well. And I get to hear Kevin all the time, and I'm still growing. Still, I'm like a sponge, so always be like a sponge, and you'll keep learning, and stuff will keep getting knocked off of you. Amen? Amen. I want to also remind you, we don't have time to, tonight. We've got so much going on. We have a lot of Warrior Fellowships, as you saw Friday night. We have a lot of Warrior Fellowships in this area, in Seattle, um, and then uh, just all the places you mentioned, which I don't remember what they are, but they're all over. Uh, and uh, we have people from Billings, Montana that were here, if I remember, Wyoming, uh, Idaho, uh, Idaho. So listen, the best thing that you can do is if you're in this area and you got all jealous that you want to be involved with a fellowship, all you got to do is go online. And then we have a whole system where it'll map out the closest fellowship near you. And if you have done that online or here and nobody's responded, that simply means there's not one in your area and you can go ahead and start one. Amen? amen. So thank you for being a part of that. We're going to receive an offering now. Everybody say amen. amen. 
So ushers, if you come uh, before you pass the buckets, I want to remind everybody uh, that something that Kevin has taught us that's really blessed my own heart because I've, I've lived through it myself, that Paul makes it clear in, the, in, the, in his epistle to the Corinthians that part of giving is, is, so, is so you can learn how to be a good, a good giver, hilarious giver, but that God will bless you to the point where now you can help somebody else who has been living in lack. How many have ever lived in lack? Okay. I am not personally living in lack in my family anymore, but I used to. So now Ryan Bruss and my wife Megan, we're at a place now we can help somebody else who's in lack. To, and that's what our church does. And now they get to the point where they're, they're now over the edge and they're living in abundance. And then it's perpetual. Amen. That's what we should be doing. That's what giving is all about. And that's what this ministry is doing. And so thank you for being a part. And you're about to see here in just a few minutes where the offering goes and uh, uh, some of the offering. And we're, we're big on outreach here. So just uh, thank you for giving. If you want to give online, the number is going to be popping up on your screen. Or you can use the, if you're here, you can use the uh, envelope. But thank you. Thank you for being a part. So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into this ministry, into the kingdom of heaven. Lord, and I thank you. That through this special seed, Lord, that nations will be touched, children will be ministered to, single moms will be ministered to. And Lord, I thank you for the missions work that you put on our heart to do, Lord. And I thank you for this offering. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ushers. Pastor Chris. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel the fire of God. And I know Kevin's ready to go over there, I could tell. So I'm going to be really quick here. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that came out today uh, and helped us with the bags. We still have about 75 to 100 bags left. So we need those bags out of here in Jesus' name. So we need you to grab a bunch of them on your way out. There's some on this back table, some on the side here. And listen, this morning when we were bagging these up, we, I could feel the power of God. I could feel the community. And listen, we're going to do this. You hear, the, you hear Kevin say this all the time. We're going to do this, and we're going to do this together. Amen? Amen? All right, so let me share something really quick here. Um, again, in your Warrior Fellowships, there's all kind of cool things you can do. Um, one of the things that we do is we make, we have a lady in our, our church. She bakes cookies, and she puts scriptures on them. And she takes boxes and boxes of cookies, and she takes them to the fire department, the police department, the nurses, the, all the first responders. Could you imagine a cop having a tough day or a nurse having a tough day going into the break room and there's a box of cookies and they grab a cookie and on the back it says, you are loved, you are valued or has a scripture on there. Could you imagine, you know, God, if you're real, I see all this stuff going on. If you're real, speak to me. They grab this cookie and on the back it has a scripture. Isn't that awesome? And I met a precious lady. This is a little poodle that she made out of beads, like, you know how they do with uh, balloons? And uh, she's such a sweet lady, she's around here somewhere. She wears a tiara on her, he on her head, she's an older lady, and the little girls come up to her and say, what's going on with the tiara? And, the, and, the, and, she'll, say, and she'll say, that's because you are a daughter of the king. And she used these little things. So listen, isn't that awesome? Yeah. The, any, we could do anything, right? And that, I just wanted to share that with you because that was really cool. Um, I have something fresh off the press that I got to share with you. Uh, one of the things, another thing that we do at our Warrior Fellowship in Concord is on Sat, sometimes on Saturdays we make up these signs that say "Need Prayer" or "Free" or "Free Hot Dogs" uh, and "Need Prayer," "Free Cotton Candy," all these things. And buy, free money. yes, free money. I was getting there. <laughs> I'm gearing up here. Um, yeah, and free money, right? So. Listen, this is what we've learned. We, we, Pastor Ryan said, you know what, let's just step out. We stepped and we did, we, we shared the vision with our Warrior Fellowship. And someone came up to us and said, listen, I want to give you $105 bills. So every hot dog that you give out, you're going to give out a $5 bill as well. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, you can clap. But I'm telling you, the reason that that happened is because we stepped out, right? God gives you a little bit, you're faithful, and you step out. So this text is hot off digital ink, if you know what that means. It was a text message from my wife this morning, and I, I had to share this. And this is a text message, okay? She said, we just ministered to a single mom here at the very end, okay? So here we are. We got all these signs out. 
hundreds of cars are going by and they see these signs, they're honking, it says need prayer, free hot dogs, free money. So you got to kind of picture this in your mind. So they're getting that to the very end. She says, we just ministered to a single mom here at the very end, took her and her three kids into the healing rooms. She said, the lady said, I saw this sign that said need prayer and I told my girls, we're going to go get a prayer. Okay. Oh, this gets better. I'm not done yet. My wife said, we prayed over her and her girls, and she started crying. Then we brought her into our pantry and filled the wagon full of groceries and toys for the girls. This right here got me, really got me. The middle daughter said, I feel like this is Christmas. Isn't that amazing? So I just want to say something into the airwaves. Take that devil in Jesus' name. Amen? Take that devil. Listen, you're going to get at a place in your life when you wake up in the morning, you're going to hear devils screaming, and they're going to say, he's up, she's up, hurry, hurry, she's up, he's up. And you're going to hear them scream. They're going to be like, oh, man, we got to do something because she's up, she's getting up, she's grabbing her, her pocketbook, she's going to the grocery store. Oh, my gosh, she's walking towards that single mom. Oh, no, she's about to pay for the groceries. Could you imagine, right? And I've heard, I talked about this before with the single moms. I'm sorry, I'm getting fired up here. I'm almost done. I've talked about this all the time, right? You go to the grocery store, you see a mom at the checkout, at the Warrior, at, uh, warrior Checkout. I call it Warrior Checkout. At Walmart. And, you know, you've been to Walmart and you have all these checkouts and you're like waiting in line. You got all these people. Uh, this is what we want you to do. We want you to see a single mom, right? Got her bag, a uh, buggy full cart. Somebody got me online earlier because I said buggy. Okay, cart, shopping cart. Shopping cart full of groceries, and you see her there with the kids. This is what we want you to do, if you can. Go up to her and say, ma'am, you're doing such an awesome job. I don't know how you're doing it. And the Lord just put it on my heart today to pay for your groceries. And God wants to know that you're doing an amazing job, and you are valued, and you are loved by God. Amen? All right, I'm going to leave you with that. And listen, we're going to do this together. Amen? All right, Pastor Mike. <laughs> I think he's trying to say that you can do this. And if you didn't get that, just see him at the end. He'll tell you it all again. I promise you. Well, listen, you guys, so I, for a long time, I, I did maintenance and different things. And you got to have tools if you're going to do a job right. You know what I'm saying? How many of you, if your kids needed something, you know as a parent, you'd be willing to go without to make sure they had what they need? Because that's what a parent does. A parent sets their kid up to be strong, to be successful, to do all these things, right? And so we have to know that our Heavenly Father has given us everything we need. We just have to tap into it, okay? So here's the thing. You got to know that there's a way for you to be equipped. There's a way for you to get the tools. There's a way for you to unlock all the things that are inside of you. Because every one of you have so much to offer, like you have so much to offer. You might think I've been through a lot and a lot of things have happened, but heaven looks at you and sees 100% potential, yeah. right? So here's what I want to, here's where I'm going with this. It is so important that you do something after this weekend. Yes. You cannot take this and then just go home and say that was great. Right. You have to activate it. If you don't activate it, then don't be surprised at the fruit that you don't see. You know what I'm saying? Don't mean to be mean, but just letting you have it right, right? So we want to, when all these things that Kevin and Kathy are doing are so that you have something to take a hold of on Monday morning, right? So here's the thing. Kevin's school, Warrior Note School of Ministry, right now we have scholarships for anybody. If you're breathing, okay, is anybody here breathing? Okay, let me check online. Are you breathing? I see you on the couch. Yeah, you. You breathing? Okay, they're breathing. Just wanted to make sure. Didn't want to have to call emergency services. But we want you to think about what is your next step, okay? Because what you received tonight, what you've already received this weekend, you now need to activate that, okay? And here's the thing. Kevin's courses are set up so you can have one-on-one -on -one mentoring, all right, all the time, well, number one email we get, well, Kevin, mentor me. And that's A, that's what he's been doing all weekend. But B, 
with these courses, it's literally him through that lens talking to you, okay? Our grads will tell you, anybody that's a student, they'll tell you this is what it is. And we're pushing this not because we need another student. We've got almost, we're all on our way to 34,000 students. We're just barely trying to keep up with y'all, okay? Yes, that was Southern, I apologize. <laughs> but we've got to equip the body, okay? So I want you to make a decision. I want you to decide what is the Holy Spirit saying that's next for you. Maybe it's to enroll into some courses. Maybe it's to start a fellowship. Maybe you need to start homeschooling. Maybe you need to go and get a little cart and give out hot dogs. Maybe you got a single parent you know about that you can make a difference, okay? But if you want, if so many times I hear people say, man, Kevin and Kathy, they've changed my life. Well, if they've changed your life, then I want you to begin to do something with it. Because if Pastor James was here, he would say, that's great you say you have it, but let me see some fruit on your tree, right? So I just want you to know this, that you guys are family. You are all Warrior Notes family. Everywhere we go, Kevin and Kathy, we have lists of all of our partners, all of our students, all of our fellowships. We're praying over you guys all the time because we can feel you guys praying over all of us. And that means we are one in the spirit, okay? So I want to encourage you with this. Take a few minutes afterwards today. Ask, you know, I've got Miss Lauren here. I've got Becca. We've got several others from the school. We've got staff here. We're here. We're boots on the ground because it's time to see the power of God flow through the streets. It's, we're done with seeing crime flow. We're done with seeing demonic flow. Let's see the glory flow. Right? Okay. But then let excitement turn into action, and then action will turn into fruit. Amen? All right. Dr. Kevin Zadai. All right. You got him? Okay. All right. All right. We need the parents that have prayed and that feel that they would be able to store these instruments for your children. And um, there's, if you just come up here, we can't give everybody one, of course, but um, we, have, we have a flute, we have drum sets, we have violin, viola, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, um, soprano saxophone, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone. Um, cajon, drum pads and drum sticks and synthesizers. Yep. Good too. All right, so go ahead, just distribute them. Thank you. No, it, that, that's the tenor, so that's the big one. You want to, for the little kids, you need an alto. Yeah. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Electric or acoustic guitar? Electric. Wow. Electric, okay. What's that? Okay. Yeah, regular guitar right there. Get the, that would be. No, no, this guy right here. For, yeah. Okay, there you go. Right here? Okay. Do we have, was that the only electric guitar? Yeah. Are you going to be able to carry this? Um, Are, is your mom here or your dad? Where's your dad? There we go. He's, we need dad's help. <laughs> okay. So we have another <laughs> that was it. That was it. Okay, this poor thing. All right, I got a lot of drum pads and drum sticks here. And I got violins. We have violins. I got a flute. We got a flute. I got a trumpet right here. Trumpet. This is a small saxophone? Yeah, that's a soprano saxophone. Drum. Okay. Is there, where's this drum? This is great. These there's are all digital. There? There's okay. drumsticks here, and then there's a pad uh, yeah. that's gone. Yeah, we got the drum pads and the sticks right here. Okay. Yeah. We have a cajon. Yeah, we have one Is there a small we could guitar? We take that cajon. Or no, like a small guitar? No, the, not, there's just violin, trumpet. There's a violin. This might be a viola. That's a viola. There's, it's a viola. This, it's, it's the lower, you know, soprano alto. It's just 
lower range. It's a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Yeah. And just it's a it's a great deal. It's free. Hi. Yeah. Do you want the viola? You want the viola? Oh, good. There you go. You're blessed. <laughs> oh, bless you. You're welcome. That's a soprano sax. What did you want? Do you, what did you want? You want a flute? Have a large flute? saxophone for an older child. Do you want a flute? A violin. Yes. All right. Um, hey, Jason, can you go back and get the one a violin for her? There, there should be one back there that, that's mine. All right, just one second, honey. I'm going to get you mine. It's back here. You have this one for a bigger. All right. Who? Hey, Sam, how are you doing? <laughs> hey, you want to play a tenor sax? Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> You're playing the tenor sax, brand new sax. There you go. <laughs> Was that left open for? Oh my gosh! Okay, no problem. Lay it down. Yeah. Who would do that? Oh, bless you. It's made in China. It can handle that. Okay. No, this little girl is getting my violin. Right? Yeah. Okay. The guns. Who? The family in the very back. Bring them up here. Do you have it? All right, get her address. I'll ship her her violin. Huh? What's that? Oh no, she couldn't. She couldn't carry that in a truck. These are the boys. All four of these. Come here, boys. These four boys right here. Okay. Yep. Andrew, th I know there's a violin back there, a viola, somewhere. Yes. I had brought two. Oh, you both of them? No, 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 there's for these. For, for Maui. Yeah, sorry, sorry. That's it, huh? Okay, what do you got back there? And what was the last one? A flute. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your address. I'm going to ship you a violin, okay? All right, but is there anything else that would you would want to play, like, like a flute or a guitar? Because I'm going to give you double for your trouble. Oh, so nice. But, I didn't even hear it. Do you have a flute wanted to play? Or a guitar that she can take home today? And we'll still ship the violin. Because you might be my favorite tonight. <laughs> You're so cute, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. <laughs> All right, acoustic guitar. All right, acoustic guitar. Pray for Honolulu. They just lost their guitar. So. <laughs> Okay. All right, these guys, these guys, um, these guys are going to get the rifles and all the dinosaur targets. Oh. You each get one. You each get a rifle. Right there. And you have extra ammo, right? Yes. Because I heard there's dinosaurs up here, so we got extra ammo. What about that T-Rex? He needs to go. Yeah. Yeah, what, what would you like? A dinosaur. Where's that little dinosaur? Give that little dinosaur. Which one? Go ahead, honey. Grab it. The T-Rex or the, the one with the horn? Okay, what does she want? What is, right there, what does she want? She wants this one. Back off. Make sure you shoot it. Okay, everybody's happy? All right. Yeah. That was great. All right, you guys can head back. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, then I'll, I'll need all the, all the young adults, the children. I need them all up here. 
We need to pray over these prayer cloths. Hey, listen, one of my favorite albums, the only thing they could ship me was these albums here. So we overnighted these albums. It's Altar Fire. This Altar Fire is my favorite album, period. Has anybody ever heard Altar Fire? It's like off the charts. Anyway, um, I got some... The, the, you do it. We got a whole bunch back here. It's, the, it's about the only thing we do have. Alter Fire, who wants it for free? All right, kids, all right. Okay, we're going to pray. Kids, I know there's more kids here. Okay, we're going to pray over the prayer clause. We're going to put, put, there you go. Thank you, Becca. Okay, just pray, pray over the prayer clause. Everybody praying? Okay, we're praying. We're going to lay hands. Over, here's some over here, too. Put your hands on there and ask Jesus to put his healing power in the prayer clause, and then we're going to hand them out. Okay, you ready? Now, everybody, I want to see everybody. Here, spread them out. Can you give me some piles? Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right, you ready? Let's lay hands. You ready? We're going to lay hands. If you can, just squeeze in there. All right, you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you will extend your hand and you'll heal the sick in this place. Father, the, the healing power of Jesus Christ is in these claws. Do miracles, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, who needs healing out here? Okay, kids, deliver. Deliver. Grab a whole bunch. Grab a whole bunch. And, and everybody that raised their hand, and don't forget the people in the back row. Okay. You didn't get any? Here, here, here. Here, there's. She's got a whole truckload right there. Here. Okay, hang on. Wait, can we have some of these? Good Grab it. You ran out already? That's fast. Okay. Well, we're going to get ready to do these right next. Come on up. All right, when you're done, come on back up. Okay, here we go. All right, kids. All right, so we got some rocks here that have some, some power words on them. I want you to pray. I want you to pick a rock with, with your favorite word on it. We got spiritual hunger. We got faith. We got holy fire. We got kingdom dominion, absolute truth, divine health. Okay. All you kids, come up here and grab a rock, pray, and, and give somebody a word. Don't forget the people in the back row. They need words, too. Okay, everybody get a cloth that needs one. If you have bad dreams, if you have bad dreams, take a cloth. All right, here you go. There's still more. Okay, grab a rock and, and deliver it to somebody out there. And don't forget the back row. And then come back up when you're done, okay? Ready? Pray over it and then go deliver it to somebody. Give it to somebody. A rock. Here. Just one. Just one each. Here. Here's some right here. This is really a good one right here. All right, kids. Now, 
you flew an airplane, now I want you to build one. So each, each of you gets an airplane, okay? There's just one rule. You're gonna build this airplane, but you're gonna build it here, but you're gonna fly it at home. Okay. And I also got you a flute. Everybody gets a flute. Okay, all right, here we go. Grab it. Who wants blue? Okay, who wants orange? Orange. You want an orange? Okay, here we go. There's a blue. You're welcome. Let me get them here. Here, help me. Oh, there we go. Orange. Blue. Orange. Red. Anybody want a red? You want a red? There we go. They're the same size, yeah. Yeah? All right. Red. Everybody get. Oh, there's our rock. Who did you get a flute? What color you want, buddy? My blue? Okay, so we're not flying the airplanes here. We're not playing the flutes here. Remember that. Red. Who wants red? Who wants blue? Who wants blue? You want red or blue? Which one? Red? Okay. Is this our paycheck? Yeah, this is your paycheck. Thank okay, you. there we go. All right, blue. Anyone want blue? Okay. You want traders in? You want another dinner for color? No. You want another one? No. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? Anybody else? What you want to need, sweetie? Oh. An orange? A flute? Okay. Okay. Did you get your plane? Yes. Alright, let's make sure we put the rocks on. Last four. Last four. There you go. Last four. Missing rock. Nothing in it, though. Empty deal. Okay. We're good? I think we're good. Yes, sir. Ready to go. Alright. That's a miracle. That was good. Time to go. Here. No kidding. Last one. Last okay, that's it. Last okay. one. Dad, are they family? Uh, airplane? Here, here's airplanes. Airplane, Mike. I got two left. That's it. <clears throat> you like that one? Okay. Oh. Okay. Good. Huh? I know. Yay. Amen. Okay, so you all can do this. You all can do this. You can, you can do this. I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, you can do this. Just believe God. Start with the airplanes and the rocks, and you'll get up to the saxophones and the violins. It's just, just one step at a time. Right? Okay. Uh, Since I'm the president of the college, I actually got my study guide. I'm the only one in the whole room that got my study guide. <laughs> Sorry, I, I will we'll make up to it next time. We'll, we'll come back. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, this is, this is good. All right. I just want to, I want to do a little bit out of this. I, tonight I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you about the, the very fact that you can, you can see your you can see your now from your future. Now think about that. This is something that, that science probably knows but is classified. But what happens if you get taken to your future in prayer or in some situation and you get to see your now from your future? Because when you're in the spirit realm, when you, when, you, when you are taken, you can be taken to a place that is your future. But then you can see where you are now from the future standpoint. And the reason I'm, I'm saying this in a way that I, the reason I'm teaching on this is because 
you can't understand where you're at and unless you really understand where you came from and where you're going because it's part of a journey and you might not know what reference point you're at at this point you might not be able to locate where you are in the journey but what I found is and what God's heart is is that the Spirit of God Jesus said that he was a spirit of truth and he's going to lead you into all truth but he also said that he's going to tell you things to come and so he said that now think about that he also said that he's going to remind us of things that Jesus said so his you can define his his job like his his way of doing things you can define his purpose I can expect him to show me the future because Jesus said he would. I can expect him to lead me into truth. So this is the reason I'm saying this is because most of us have some sort of element of deception. There's some sort of deception working in our lives. We don't we're not completely unveiled on everything. And these things just because you don't know it doesn't cause it to not exist. So just because you don't know something doesn't mean that it's not really, it's still, hap it's still happening. You just don't know about it. Okay, also, you might have an understanding, but not the complete understanding. So there might be things that you don't have the, the whole picture. You don't have the whole understanding of it. There's all these different things. I could just sit up here at, or stand up here and talk and tell you all the different combinations of how our understanding is and the things we're lacking. Every one of us sees stuff from a different perspective. But the spirit of truth, when he comes, he's, he's going to pretty much level the playing field in order to get us on the same page. So the whole idea here is, yes, I totally understand that some people came from different places. They've had different things happen. They have a different perspective. I understand all that. Um, I've never been to hell. I don't want to go to hell. And, you know, and I... I mean, I don't need to be on Sid Roth and talk about hell, you know, because I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I don't want to go to hell. I don't think I need to write a book on hell. But some people claim they've been there. I don't know why they went there. I don't, I don't understand all that. I don't know why Jesus would take anybody to hell just to show them that. But there are people that claim that. What I'm saying is, is that some people have been shown other things. That doesn't mean that it didn't really happen, or just because I didn't and I didn't go. Jesus, uh, I didn't put it on request. There's not something I want to see. I didn't want to see my mansion. I, I met Jesus and he said, well done, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good forever. I don't care about a mansion, I don't care what's in my driveway. All this other stuff, this is, this, it's, to me, it's, 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 not, it's not my goal. Okay, but, the one thing that I do want is everybody to be on the same page. So to get all of us on the same page, we have to speak the truth and realize that truth can be, listen, absolute. This is what the war has been in this world, in this generation especially, because I live in this generation, I've seen it. I don't know about all the others because I read about it. But what I've determined from each generation as I study history, I've determined that Satan is actually after absolute truth because that is the key to having us all on the same page. So if there's a Holy Spirit, which there is, then we need to define him by absolute truth and, and it, we have to take everything that's in the Bible and we have to define and, and make it absolute truth, because then if we get absolute truth in a list of different things, then I can teach from that absolute truth. Then everybody, no matter it, what place you grew up in, whether you've been to hell or heaven, you met Jesus or Satan, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is, is that you, we all are on the same page. Some of you have dreams, some of you have visions, some of you, um, you, know, you experience other things that I've never experienced. But the focus has to be on absolute. Okay, what, what, is, what is the truth? The truth is, is until we're perfected in love, the gifts of the Spirit will be active. 
The Spirit will be active in His ministry on the earth until we're perfected in love, because that's what Paul said. It says when we're perfected, when we get to perfection, tongues will cease, prophecy will cease. We won't need any of those things anymore. Okay, that's when he said tongues will cease. That's when he said prophecy will cease. So no one has the authority on this earth to say that all the gifts of the Spirit and all the miracles ceased with the, with the apostles. No one has the authority to do that. Because Jesus said, he, those believing ones shall have these signs follow him. It, it, it clearly says it's the believer. And it clearly says by Paul that these things are not going to cease until we reach perfection. Okay, so the whole idea is, is to get everybody into unity. Unity in the faith. And that will cause maturity. So we have to have absolute truth. And we have to establish that. If you do that, and we all get on the same page, then what happens is, we realize that the Spirit of God wants to take us and show us the future. It's part of His job. It's part of His assignment according to, to Jesus. So you should be always reminded of what Jesus has said. That would be the Holy Spirit doing that because that's what Jesus said. You should also be shown the future. Yeah. And you should know the truth. It should set you free. You should live by the truth, nothing but the truth. You, you, you have to determine that your future is the throne of God. And there's nothing but truth up there. There's no lying. There's no anything. There's no deception up there. I encountered that. I met Jesus. I talked with him. I encountered truth. I encountered the powers of the coming age. I encountered my creator. I encountered the essence of, 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 of what we're, who we are by God's breath. By him breathing on me, I understand myself. And then I came back. I came back to the same world that I left, but I came back with a different perspective. I was in my future. I was at the throne and I was in my future and I came back from my future and I know I can do this life. I know I can win. I know I can help other people win. I can make history. I can change the routing of people's lives. That's what Jesus told me. He said, you go back and, and I am going to use you to reroute people's lives. That's what he told me. And this is, this is what he said. He said, they're going to finish differently than they were because you came back. And I said, okay, I'll come back. But the only thing is, is that it's really, to me, very simple. It's not complicated, and it's basic, and it's, it's just a few things. It's not a whole bunch of complicated things. You don't need to know the, the Hebrew and the Greek. What you have to know is that the Spirit of God wants to take you to your future so that you can live down here effectively now. So you, you experience where you're going before you experience tomorrow. The Spirit can take you there and show you truth and cause you to be ignited so that you become effective in your now. Okay, so what we're dealing with, with everybody, is, is that you've gone through different things up until now, and it's formed your personality, it's formed the way you process things, the way you think things. It, it causes you to not be able to always grasp certain things, because you have blind spots. And that's why we need each other. So we always need each other to say something because we don't always catch things. And, you know, I'm training to fly my jet by myself to get a single pilot rating, which they don't just give out like coupons, you know. But it's not real. It's really hard because I don't have anybody else. So for the last several months, 
I have, an, I have Sven or, or Lou with me, but they just sit there. And then every now and I, then I say, help. <laughs> but I'm trying to get to the place where they're not there. I don't know what that was. <laughs> but the key, the key here is, is that God doesn't have to have you be solo. He can mentor you into it. The, the key here is that why would I want to do that when I can have someone else? Okay, but I have to be able to do this because there are times where I, it's just going to be me and Kathy and I need to go somewhere. And if I'm going to pass my test in June, I'm going to be fine. But it is, it is just beyond your imagination what, what it takes to do that. You imagine somebody just flying a jet by themselves that's going 600 miles an hour and doesn't want to slow down. The, the thing just wants to keep flying. Okay, that's how I feel with being in the Spirit. I feel like everything is fast, very fast. But I feel like down here, you all are pretty slow. Yeah. It, 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 you know what I mean? We're all slow. I mean, you humans, you know, no, it's not just like, no, no. That's, that's, the th that's the thing is the Spirit's very fast. And the Spirit is, is, is forward-looking. And the Spirit, is pro He wants to problem-solve. He wants to fix things. He wants to reroute you. So He wants to assist you. But there is going to come a point where all of us are maturing on the same page to where you, you can just do things by the Spirit and it matches and, and, it, and is with everybody. So you're not like working against people. You know, what God's telling you is not opposing someone else. You get that, right? Okay, but up until a certain point, we all need help. We all need each other. And I feel like the Spirit is really strongly saying this, that, that in order to interpret your now, you've got to be in your future to see where you're going to see the plan of God. This is not, this sounds mysterious. You know, mystery, it's, uh, I, I call it, we made up our own words, so I, that's what I usually say, mysterious, but it's not, that's not a word. But my, me and my wife have a whole other language. We could talk to each other and you wouldn't even know what we're saying. But the, the, this is not like a weird. What I'm saying is, is that there is no limit with the Spirit as far as the time. There, there is no time in the Spirit. So you can actually be shown your future and then, and then sent back. And then you kind of have an intuition of what's going to happen. So what I found, because this happened to me, is this. Is that it's amazing what God has planned and all the, all the things that He has listed that He wants done. But it's, it's amazing to me how, how little gets done. And, and no one wants to tell you that. I don't see God's will done as much as you would think it's done. God's will is not done. Very seldom is it done. It's the weirdest thing because, see, people say, well, God's in control. Oh, really? So you tell, you tell the people who lost, lost all their loved ones in the last three years, you tell all the stuff that's happened, you say God's in control? The God of this world is not the God that sits on the throne. This is a broken world. So if we don't have help from heaven, if we don't have intervention, if we don't have someone to come in and mentor us and help us through things, there's no way we're going to be able to navigate. There is no way. You need the Holy Spirit to, to help you. But here's the, here's the case. The case is this, is that God's will can be done in your life, but... He doesn't make everyone else do His will. So the most important thing to me is, is that we all are in agreement to where we don't lose anyone. We put our foot down and we go to the next level because there is a destiny for everybody in this room. Where I'm at in the spirit, I could come back in a year and everyone would still be here. Not, we wouldn't lose one person because that would be God's will. So based on that, 
we have to decide now and make a decision that God is going to protect every one of us and that there is not going to be any more things stolen from us Amen. in any area of our life. We, we have to take this stand. But the only way that you can know perfectly is through the Word of God and also letting the Spirit show you your future. So this, this is what has happened to me. I've been in, in situations where I was not going to make it. I was going to die. It's, it's happened several times. And as I'm about to die, I see the, t the, the film playing, and I know I'm not supposed to die. But I can feel death. I can feel it working. I've, I've been sick. I've had, been in planes, instant incidences, and things like that, and all kinds of other stuff. I had to dig way down inside myself, in my heart, and I saw in my heart this glimpse of hope that this is not my, this is not God's will, and this is not my time to die. I had to take a hold of that and fight the devil. And I'm telling you, I'm taking hold of every one of you right now. I'm in the spirit and I am not letting you go. Amen. Now, I'm saying that because the plans that the enemy has is, 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 is he wants to take every one of you out. No one wants to tell you that, but that the Satan hates you. He doesn't care about you. If he could have taken you out, he already would have. So why, what's preventing it? I believe it's because your spirit is hooked up with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is showing you things to come and it's rerouting you. If I would have said I want to stay in heaven, you would never have known me and you would never have known the story and I'd be fine with that. It wouldn't matter to me because I'd be up there yeah. doing some soft shoe on the, on the sapphire stone. I'd be dancing. And I'd probably be, you know, assigned somewhere. But he sent me back because God was not finished with the people on the earth yet. He's not finished with you. He's not finished with... The things, the things that are going on in your life, he's, he's, not, he's not accepted them. He's voted against the enemy on your behalf, and he refuses to let you go. But the Spirit is the one that takes hold of these things. And there's a fight going on, but nobody is able to, to, to stand up and just, to, and just discern these things and explain them to you. So you have to make a decision that you're going to live and not die, and you're going to see the glory of God, and you're going to be in the land of the living. You've got to decide that. You've got to, you know, I don't think about going to hell. I don't ever think about going to hell. I'm not going there. I don't ever think about failure. I don't think I can fail. And I'm sure if God let me go, I would. I'd be the, first, the next step would be a real bad one. But I know if I stay in step, I'm going to continue to live. Satan will not be able to take me out. I will not get any disease that they invent or they bring over from somewhere else. I'll never be able, I'll never be able to contact or contract those things. But I know that because I know that nothing bad, according to Psalms 91, can touch me. I know that, but I was sent back. Okay, but don't you think that you should start to proactively protect your children and your assets and your next step, your businesses, your everything about you, your church, your pastor, whatever. You need to start to define and label things and say, this is under my watch, this is my, in my covenant, 
And I am not going to allow this to happen. You, you, we have to switch and flip in our minds and be proactive from now on. We cannot just let things happen. We got to fight. And we need each other. I got to be able to call on you and say, pray. If, you know, if I'm not, if I'm not feeling well, I should be able to, to, you know, as a minister, not hide it. I should be able to ask for prayer and not be embarrassed that I don't have faith. You get it? So I'm not going to go there, but I'm very upset about all this stuff because, you know, if something doesn't happen, it, they, they say it's your lack of faith. Well, okay, I'm still here, though. Let's, what else do I do now? Because we still got to fix this. Okay, so I don't have faith. Can you help me? I do believe. Help me in my unbelief, Lord. Right? If you, if, so, if you lay hands on people and you ask them, you know, do you see now? And they go, well, they're, I see people, but they're like trees. You know, if Jesus had to lay hands on somebody twice, I think we can do. So was it a lack of faith the first time that Jesus laid hands on that guy? When have you heard a sermon on that? It, The bottom line is this. Every one of us want to connect with God. Every minister, every one of us should love and minister to people and help them connect with God. The bottom line is, is that it doesn't matter where you've come from or even your perception. The bottom line is you need to connect with the Holy Spirit and you need to get everything that's supposed to come to you in this life. You need to get it. Okay, so if that is... If that is obeying God and doing something that's uncommon, then you have to do it. You see, the culture today would not allow Jesus to put mud in our eyes. <laughs> Lord, can you, can you do something else? And then he goes to spit in your eye, and you go, no, 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 not that either. <laughs> no, no, think about it. No, think about it. The, the, things that, the things that are in the Bible, yeah. they were counterculture. Yeah. And he didn't really do the same thing again. You know, he, he did other things. Sometimes he told them to go show themselves to the priest, which was a really bad guy. Sometimes he would tell people, don't sin anymore. That goes over well, you know. But do you get, you get my point. Yeah. But the whole idea is that now the Spirit wants to get us all on the same page. So we have to accept certain things, which has to do with the Holy Spirit. And that is why Satan has gotten into so many churches, and they preach against the Holy Spirit. They actually preach against the gifts. They make fun of us. They call us all kinds of names. But the Holy Spirit is the only person we have down here. Jesus is on the throne and God is on the throne. And the Holy Spirit is in us. We need the Holy Spirit. So we need the gifts of the Spirit. We need miracles. We need to be able to pray in the Spirit. We need to be able to pray the mysteries out. So Satan got into the church as a, a general statement and began to turn on its own. And used authority in the church to speak against the Holy Spirit. So, to me, I know because I met Jesus personally, I know why he said what he said. He said, you can speak against me, and you can speak against my Father. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit, he said, there is no forgiveness for that in this life or the next. That's why he said that. It's because of the day we're living in. It's because he knew that this would happen. The common thing that we have is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is truth. If you look at the Word of God, and you look at Hebrews chapter 4, it says that the Spirit is a sword, but it's also the Word. The Word and the Spirit are a sword. The Holy Spirit is a sword, but He's also, the Spirit is the Word. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the sword of the Spirit. It says it. Okay. 
So all of us are going to get on the same page. You need the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit have not ceased because we haven't been perfected yet. I haven't met a perfect person yet, except Jesus. So we, need, we obviously aren't there yet. We all need to walk in the supernatural. Okay? All right, now. This usually stirs up. I, this usually stirs up the devil is pretty good. The divine nature. Talking about the divine nature. Peter said that by which we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Being partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Okay, that's in 2 Peter chapter um, 1, verse 4. And um, th this is from the study guides you get, didn't get. You know. All right. Romans chapter 8, verse 19 says, The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of the glorious sons and daughters of God. So, the church that I want to attend is, is the church that you're at. Because you're my family. But, the church that I attend has sons and daughters of God in it. And the, and the church that I want to be a part of is the people that discern that they are partakers of the divine nature. If you get what I'm saying, you will never give up no matter what. Jesus told me, if you go back, you cannot fail. So when I get on an airplane, I don't care what happens to it. I will walk home if I have to, but nothing will happen to me. I might have to walk home or take Southwest. <laughs> but it's not going down anyway. It's not going down. Do you understand that? Yes. Why? Because... The Spirit can take me to the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord has already protected us in so many ways. Yes. If you have suffered loss, the best thing you can do is keep going. The best thing you can do is make sure the devil knows that there is a round two. Yeah. That's good. That's great. And I tell him, this will be your last round. I am not going to let the devil have any satisfaction whatsoever. So it, all of you have lost in here. But the best thing you can do is start laughing and saying, ring the bell. <laughs> and the referee says, uh, don't you want to rest? No, no. No, I'm just going to go ahead and take them out. Right. You have to get to this place where your future affects your now. Because you know what's going to happen in the future because you're going to be at the throne. You're going to be walking in total perfection. Your spirit can touch that now. This is what I know. I mean, honestly, if any of you had this happen, you would totally understand what I'm trying to tell you now. If you, any of you had this happen to you, you'd be up here doing this. I don't doubt that. Every one of you, if you had what happened to me and you were sent back, I guarantee you, you'd be doing this. Because I saw how it works down here. How it works down here, it's very slow. But if you stay in there, you cannot fail. You have to stay in there. Now, there are all kinds of supplements that you should be taking that will extend your life out by 20 years. And so I have to, because I'm not a doctor, a medical doctor, I've had to get a nurse 
on staff that's going to do this so that we can legally do it because she's got a license. So we're going to start to talk about the things that the Lord showed me that you need to take. If you take these things, your immune system will fight off anything that they can manufacture. No, I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> but, the, but see, the, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God can, can, uh, heals people. Yes. However, there are times where you have to fight. But the, what the Lord showed me was there are things that you can do where you don't get sick and you don't develop certain things. There are things that you can do right now. The, the Spirit of the Lord, because when I came back, it's taken many, many years since that time. I finally found out what was going on with my body in different areas. I couldn't figure it out. I tried everything. And just recently, I, I finally, after a prayer, got the words and went and looked them up. And the Amazon truck came. <laughs> Without a prescription. And it, I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe the list of things that are gone by just praying and letting the Lord guide you. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, is if the spirit of truth speaks to you and he knows your future and he tells you you're eating the wrong things and you need to eat certain things, you need to cer stop certain things, you need to do certain things, then... Can you see where it's still supernatural? And, and this is the thing that, because people misunderstand, so I'm going to say it anyway, because I don't care, is you would not believe, like people, people believe for healing, but you would not believe how many things God could fix if he could talk to you. I saw that we don't need healing. We need wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> that we wouldn't get certain things. Listen, there are things you can take where cancer can't live in your body. And of course they know that. They're watching right now, they're probably in the room. You know, they, whoever they are. You know, they probably eat ice cream, you know. You didn't get that. For instance, I saw that if you drank a lot of pure water, that you could extend your life out by, by several years. Based on what, how long you would live, you could, you could change that. You could change your future just by changing and drinking more water. I mean, I can, go, I can just say a whole bunch of other things, too. But the Spirit of the Lord wants to help you. So Jesus healed people. He raised people from the dead, but he said, feed them, too. So immediately, when he would raise somebody from the dead, he would say, Give them, make them a meal. Why? Because they would, they would go and die again. Because their body needed food to fight and to, to replenish and to get their body back. So there was natural things too. Okay, here, the divine nature that I encountered in heaven, I saw that I was supposed to be living in divine health. It, it wasn't divine healing. I saw that I was supposed to live in divine health where I didn't need healing. Amen. That goes over well. <laughs> no, but think about it. Divine health. What, who talks about divine health? Who talks about getting to a place where demons don't want to be near you? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many times I've come across dead animals and I went to pick them up and they came alive? You haven't seen those videos where people will start doing CPR on animals and bring them back. Well, don't you think that maybe we need to get more into the supernatural so that we can start to see these things start to happen? But we all need to do this as a congregation, not as individuals. We need to get together and agree. 
Okay, so for instance, I saw that the best medicine you can take is to start laughing. Yes. Just to laugh. And the best thing to do, the best thing to do is laugh at yourself. I grew up watching cartoons, and I, st I still ca got, came out okay. But I always wondered, like, I was so irritated with Daffy Duck. Like, why is he always, like, he's always, like, trying and working it, and he's prideful, and, and Bugs Bunny comes, and everything just works for him. And I just, Daffy Duck is, like, Big mouth, into himself, always trying to prove himself, always, you know. Bugs Bunny comes and goes. This, Jesus is this way. Jesus is like that. Jesus comes, and he doesn't have to work anything. He, he, if he would come and talk to you, which I believe he's talking through me, but he would tell you, listen, you're better than this. Whatever it is that you're going through, he would specifically know it. And he would say, you're better than this. And this is what he said. Hey, this is what we're going to do. Just take my hand, and I'm going to walk you through this. We can do this together. That's what he would say. If he was speaking tonight, this is what he would say. So that's why I am the way I am. Because there's always a way out. There's always a, there's always a way. Jesus knows what that way is, but he's got to be able to talk to you. So for the last two years, I've been distributing instruments all over. But see, one day those instruments will, will come back to me with kids that can play. And then in every city, we'll, we will have services where the, the children will do this worship. And it will be on instruments that we sewed into them. This will happen. You will see kids. I mean, we did it with Caesar. We gave him a bass. The Lord told me to buy him a bass. He, he sat and practiced, and I said, bring it on. That's right. mm -hmm. good. Caesar and Sydney, when I go to the airplane, I call them sometimes. I say, come to the airplane with me. I set them in the seat beside me, and I go through the whole checklist with them. I show them how to load the computers. I do the walk around, with, and I let them walk around with me. I do that every city I go to. I, I call, I tell Ryan... Find some parents with kids so that when we, as soon as we land in every city, I said, we're going to refuel and then we're going to bring the kids out. And I said, I'm going to take them for a ride. I'm going, to, I'm going to let them sit in the seat and take a picture with them. Not in the air, of course, but um, I'm going to let them do the walk around. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to let, I'm going to, I'm going to let them put the headsets on and, and hear air traffic control. So Sydney, Sydney and Caesar. But I've shown them multiple times how, what I have to do every flight. But see, one day, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stick, and the next thing you know, they're going to be flying with me. One day, they will be flying with me as a pilot. And I've already told them, Mia, too. Mia... There's Mia right there. And she's, she's come up during the flight because she has her student pilot's license, so she can sit in the seat. But one day she will be my co-pilot. And she hasn't even soloed yet. But I already know it, right? The Lord told me. She will be my, one of my pilots one day. She's a teenager. She just graduated. But this is how Jesus is. This is how the Spirit of God is. He takes people's hands and he walks them into their destiny. And this is what the church is supposed to be doing. But the church is you. It's not the building and it's not a congregation of denominational people. It's, it's all of us from all walks of life. But where the Spirit brings us into unity and we cannot fail. I don't care how long you sit with me. We can go and sit through three meals. You will never talk me out of what I already know. I cannot fail.
And the reason I cannot fail is because Jesus set me back and told me I can't. But when he, the same spirit that he said that to me in is the same spirit that I preach this good news. It's this divine nature. It's partaking in a divine nature. I don't fail because I don't quit. This whole life is just a learning process. Jesus told me that we were on probation down here. He told me that I'm literally on probation. He said this life actually determines what you do for me for eternity. That's what he told me. He said, this is your test down here. What you do down here with what I gave you is where you're placed in eternity. And he, so what he did was he took me, he put me in my uniform. It was, you know that Black Hills gold? That the Black Hills gold, what do they call it? Rose gold. Yeah, my outfit was a rose gold. Uh, it was oriental, it had buttons the whole way down, like an oriental robe with all this embroidery on it. I had badges and patches, and I had, I had about seven or eight stripes on my, seven or eight stripes, not a captain, but seven stripes right here. I had, I had territories that I was over. And he looked at me and he said, he said, you're going to rule and reign with me forever, shoulder to shoulder. He said, you're just down here qualifying for your position. <laughs> so he put the uniform that I'm going to wear for eternity on me. And he said, I'm going to rule and reign with him shoulder to shoulder. And he said, go back and tell people. Tell the people the truth. <clears throat> I'm not going to be judged with the world. I'm not at the same judgment seat. I'm rewarded for what I did with what I was given. It's not the judgment you think. It's an audit of what you did with what you were given. N not what other people had, what you were given. I'm telling you. Do not quit. Do not ever give up. Jesus told me. He said, you counted the cost. He said, you went and sold everything you had and you bought the pearl of great price. He said, you counted the cost and you, you bought me. You got me. That's what he told me. He said, just like the parable, you go and sell everything you have and you go and buy the field because you know there's a treasure there. You went and you bought the pearl of great price. He told me I had done that. So I obtained him. And I took, according to scripture, I, I started to partake of the divine nature. Which means that in any situation there is a solution. And I know why I'm talking like this. Because I, I don't know if you realize, but the Lord, the, the, the month that COVID broke out, and the Lord told me, this is it. I was in Michigan, and he said, you're teaching your weekend spirit school on healing. And if you look, I was the last one I did. And then I had to go to my studio. And I, I, for over a year, I, I, every weekend, I told the devil, I'm going to do a spirit school every weekend live, all every weekend, three day, every, by myself. And I said, I will continue to do it until you back off. And so what happened was, after 13 months, convention centers started to open up where they said, you can come. And so we'd go three times a year to a certain places because they would let us go. And the, and the police would say, you know, once we shut the doors, you can just do what you want. Take your masks off and, you know, pull the seats together. And, and it just kept going and going and going. But it, we were scheduled to be here. And they canceled on us. And I go, why? Everything's fine. And they're like, what? We had all, I think we, had, we were shipped the pallets. We were ready to ship the pallets and everything here to have the first spirit school three years ago. And the devil stopped it. And this is the first time we've been back since then. 
and I realize it. So I realize what's happening. What I, I realize that now what's happening is that this is payback. This is really payback. And I remember I came for a one-nighter, and I mean, we were in that big ballroom downtown. I mean, there was a thousand people, people all on, on the walls, nobody. People were hungry. We, 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 we did a Kansas City one. I, I tricked the devil, because we couldn't get in there. So I tricked the devil. What I do is I, I, I tell them, okay, we're gonna go to this city. As soon as I, I say that, then I go, okay, we're gonna do a one-nighter. We're gonna sneak in there. We're gonna say we're getting fuel, but we're gonna stay the night. And so we, we got that Kansas City hotel that they wouldn't give us. We have money. And we can't, they're, 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 we get locked out of different places. That, that Seattle hotel down there, they said, you can come back, but it's 75000 for one night. Oh, yeah, because the first time, you know, they didn't have anybody. I said, oh, no, no. It didn't go from 16000 to 75000 And they backed off, right? Okay, will you take 22? <laughs> yeah, we'll take 22, or whatever, you know. Okay, so Kansas City, they, we couldn't get in all year. So we faked them. We did, we, I said, well, we're gonna do a, a one-nighters right off the cuff. We, I said, can you book them all and make one of them Kansas City? We got in there. There were so many people that the, the ballroom was full but there were people in the parking lot, in their cars, watching me on their phones in the parking lot. <laughs> they couldn't get in. Wow. Okay, so then I realized when, when this happens in Seattle and these different places, it's because the devil's trying to shut down the city. And it's warfare. And if you all knew what, what, what really our staff, I mean, we have the most amazing group of people, but they know the warfare that we go through just to do the right thing. But it's really because God wants every person to be on the same page. And that page is, is that he wants you to be in divine health. And I don't know why people are, I guess everybody's afraid to say these kind of things. Because what if they catch something? You know, what if they die? What if they don't? What, what if you get what if tonight, because I know what's going to happen, you're going to walk out of here, and the power of God's going to hit you on the way to your car. This happens all the time. When you get home, the power of God's going to get stronger. Tomorrow it'll be even stronger. A week from now it's going to be stronger. A year from now it'll be stronger. And, and don't, nobody can figure it out. This happens all the time. Because I said, Lord, if I go back, I want fruit that lasts. I don't want, I don't want it waning. I don't want people to depend on me. I want it to be where you go to their house and you mess with them. Get them, God. Get them, God. Get them, God. You know, get, just, just, just wake you up in the middle of the night. Where God says, what you doing? What you doing? I'm trying to sleep. You want to pray? I mean, God, God's like, you want to pray? Spirit's like, you want to pray? You want to pray out the mysteries? You want to, you want to uh, bring down some strongholds in Seattle? You know, and, you, and, and he's, he's like, let's mess with the enemy. He's like that. He wants us to, to get into this. So he wants you to do things that make your life longer so that you don't have to believe for healing. It's kind of weird sounding, but that's just the way it is. You, you know, if you have to believe for healing, you know, that's, that's fine. But if you're not afraid to die, it's easier to live. I'm just not afraid to die. I have no problem with it. You got to get to the place where you're not afraid. I'm not afraid of the next bad thing that's going to happen because it's not going to happen. Why? Because we got time. We got time to fix that. See, you got to understand something. God is interested in everything about you. Kathy and I, we couldn't find our keys. In Phoenix, Arizona, we couldn't find our keys in our house. It was, we, we, we went through the whole house. I'm like, how hard can this be? There's only two of us. We can't blame it on pets or kids. We don't have it. <laughs> it's me or her. Two hours later, 
I had this bright idea. Let's pray. <laughs> and we had cleaned, I mean, the house was completely like cleaned out because we'd taken everything off of everywhere trying to find them. So we had this really beautiful glass table that was given to us by our friends from Southwest Airlines, uh, uh, flight attendants. And um, it was a, it's a really nice table. I wish I had it. I think we gave it away, didn't we? Bummer. But there's nothing on the table. It's this big, long, you know, big eight-foot disc of glass with uh, this stand. Uh, it was a beautiful table. Did I mention it was beautiful? No, I'm missing it. We prayed, and, and I just added this little thing that came from the divine nature. I said, angels of the Lord, just go and get our keys. Those keys dropped into the middle of that table. There's nothing else on the table, and now they're on the table. Okay? Things like this have happened. I just don't talk about them, but tonight I'm going to talk about this stuff. Because I think that we should start really expecting God to do miracles. I don't think we should no, any longer tolerate with lack and loss and disappointment and discouragement. I think that I think the missing ingredient is the fact that we, we, don't, we don't talk to each other, we don't agree, we don't get together, and that, that's changing. Yes. Now, I know people. I used to have people pray for me all the time, and it's not been that long ago, and I had been to heaven. But there are people I can call, and they will pray, and whatever I want, it will happen. They will get, there are people right now that I can call. I don't call them anymore. But if I wanted to, you better, you better embrace yourself because God is going to move. These people can get a hold of God. Okay? What if we had a whole generation like that? I remember that the president of, my, of the college that I went to, he was a pastor in Texas, Kenneth Hagin, he, he had trained these, these intercessors. There weren't that many of them. They had a prayer team, you know, and they met on Monday night. And he told us in class, he said, I trained these, these ladies how to pray. And he said, it got to where he would announce Sunday night, those who have prayer requests, please turn them in tonight because they meet tomorrow morning, Monday morning. But he said this, he said, you better be sure that what you turn in is what you want, because you're going to get it. Amen. Do you remember him saying that? He had trained these ladies to pray to where they could get anything that was turned in. I remember the professor, that, one of the professors at the, the, the Assemblies of God College that I went to, the, the head honcho, the the, uh, the, what do they call it? The, the guy that's head of the assemblies of God. Uh, you know, it's like the head pontiff or whatever, you know. <laughs> the grand poopaw, whatever. You know. <laughs> I don't know what. But he said that that, that guy, the president or whatever of the assemblies, uh, was going to die. Yeah, he was in the hospital, and all the presbyters, all the whatever they call them, um, were in his room. And this guy, this professor, I really liked him because he was humble. And he said that everybody was like talking about, well, you know, this is the way it's going to be. And he said, he said, everybody grab hands. He said, this, this organization was formed from the power of God in 1914 in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And he said, if we don't get a hold of God right now, we're going to lose a good man. And they prayed, and that guy got up out of bed and lived. He got up out of bed from, from in his deathbed. Okay, the reason I'm saying this is because it was a group of the people that were in authority, and they, they weren't, that man would have died. But that professor said, no, we're going to get a hold of God. I feel like people fight things on their own and they don't need to. I feel like we need each other. Yes. And so I'm handing this over to you. I'm, I'm getting this ready so it runs forever, and then I'm turning it over to the students. 
and the students will exceed me. Every student will exceed me and, and my wife. And we will stay home and we will watch your videos <laughs> of you teaching. And, and, because there has to come that place where we all agree and get on the same page together and then we go and we do it. Amen. But it's not doing it like you think. It's not hard. God is working with us, performing miracles. It says that God was working with them. And that's what I feel in this room. That's what I feel about Seattle. I never wanted to leave. I mean, not far from here where we lived, the Lord spoke to both of us in the same place, in the same spot in our house, and told us to go, to tell us to sell and go. Or we would have never left. But my, my heart's still here. And I love all of you. But the best thing that I can do for you is to tell you, never give up. Never give in. And, and I'll always allow God to speak to you for a way of escape. There's always a way out of everything. God already knows whatever situation you're in. He can make a miracle happen right now. So I'm believing for financial miracles for you. Amen. Yes. I'm believing for God, uh, God ideas. There are things that people need right now that He can use you to provide for that. All my books are written from cards that I pass out in con conferences where I ask, I didn't do it here. We could do it tomorrow if you like. If I can get three by five cards. <laughs> All my books are written off of what you put in. I ask you, what, what are you dealing with? What, what's, what's the devil bothering you about? What are you dealing with right now? Just write it down. Don't put your address, your name. Just tell me what you're dealing with, and I'll write a book about it. I'll, I'll, I'll make a course about it. That, that all my books are from you all. All I'm doing is meeting needs. So a business person, you could just meet needs and prosper. Do you get it? Yeah. Or no? Yeah. That's the divine nature. God wants to meet people's needs. So what are you facing? The Spirit of God is speaking through me. What are you facing? What are you, what are you encountering right now? Because the divine nature will not tolerate any resistance of evil spirits in your life. That the, the curses are broken. We're dealing with weakness down here. We're just dealing with weakness. All right, so something just happened in the spirit. I'm flipped out. Because I felt like all of a sudden, all of our spirits just, just became one. It's just the wildest thing. Every, everyone has just got connected. And what I realized is, is that we can turn this whole thing. We, we can actually turn it. All right, so everybody's going to agree with me, yes. right? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna agree right now. Yes. You ready? Yes. Say this, Father, Father whatever your intention is for my life, whatever it is that's written about me, I agree with you. I request that you send angels right now to help me to minister for me, minister for me. Because, I'm because I'm going to inherit salvation. Father, create that fire in me, Father, that fire in me. And, teach me and teach me how to speak from that fire. We forbid evil spirits to work in this city. We agree that angels will come. We agree, for we agree for overthrow. We agree for righteousness to reign. We agree for righteousness to reign. Now I feel like a healing flow is coming through. Just receive, just receive. It's not in your head, just receive. There's a heat. It's like there's a healing, there's a heat. I can feel it. The Lord wants to heal his body right now. 
some of you need a miracle. But things are going to be reversed. Receive the healing power of Jesus Christ right now. Receive your deliverance from any sickness, disease. Silence the lying lips that are speaking against you. That's what the Lord is saying. We silence the lying lips that are speaking against us. Father, I disagree that you're taking everyone's hand right now, that Jesus is walking us out into our perfect, the perfect plan, the perfect destiny, our destiny. Right now, we agree. I command the gifts of God to come forth. callings and gifts of God to come forth in Jesus' name. What you're feeling in this room is as close as it gets to heaven. I feel, I feel heaven in this room. The Spirit of the Lord is just telling me to tell you that from now on you just say, you're working, God. Just thank you, you're working. I know you're working it out. Every day you just say, Lord, you're working it out. Yeah. It's still early. It's still. It's only eight forty. If you can stay in this, if you can just feel comfortable just doing nothing, this is this is as good as it gets. The power of God is so strong that you, I, I don't know how anybody could stand. I'm I'm leaning against this pulpit right now. If you will allow that that, that what is in this room to saturate you, I'm telling you, there is no turning back. You will never have to look back. What is happening in here is an impartation of your future. It's impartation of your future. It's in the room right now. The Spirit of God is literally going to take you. And you're going to end up just fine exactly where God wants you. You're going to end up just fine. I'm telling you. If you can just stay here in this presence... Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
The Lord just saying, let me love you. Just let me love you. <clears throat> Let's worship a little bit. Let's worship. The Lord says, just let me love you. It's time for you to rest. Just let me love you. Just call 
It's time for you to come back 
Let me feel real 
out okay are you blessed all right see you guys tomorrow morning thank you